Welcome back. So in this lecture, we're going to continue the topic of talking about population models. Uh, we're going to go back to the simple case of just dealing with one population at a time. Uh, but we're going to introduce uh, the additional complexity of asking, how can we use population models to understand how we can better manage uh, populations? So. Since I teach this course at Boston University, um, I want to choose an example of, of a motivating example to think about when we go through this material that, that's very close to home. And for me, quite literally close to home, because uh, while most of my students are here in Boston, at least uh, in normal years, they are there in Boston, uh, I actually live up here on the North Shore. And when I give this lecture face to face, I like to ask, how many folks have been up to the North Shore, and particularly how many people have been up uh, to Gloucester and, and or Rockport, or basically Cape Ann, this Cape here. Uh, and because this, uh, what a lot of people don't know about the history of Massachusetts is that this is actually the part of Massachusetts that was first colony, colonized, and the process of colonization actually, at least colonization by, by Europeans, I should clarify that, uh, the, the First European settlements in Massachusetts started, you know, uh, well, the, the, this area was uh, inhabited, uh, and then they worked their way down to Salem, and so on to Boston. So, so the, the inhabitation up here predates uh, the city of Boston, and that this these villages that were established here were established as fishing villages, and so. There is a deep history of fishing within Massachusetts, and the primary thing that was fished uh, historically in Gloucester uh, was cod. And so this is actually a picture of the sacred cod. It still hangs in the Massachusetts State House, just a few miles down the road to where I sit at BU. And uh, it literally is a giant six foot long sculpture of a cod that is kind of a tribute to just how important cod was to the, the economy of the state of Massachusetts. And it predated it, it the early colonial economy, the uh, early statehood colonial, and, and even prior to that, because there's a lot of evidence uh, to support the idea that prior to the actual settlement uh, by European cultures, um, that there were actually the Europeans coming over to this part of the world uh, and fishing for cod um, and then returning and just not telling anyone that, that, that Europeans were in North America before Columbus discovered North America and just like any good fisherman uh, did not reveal where their best fishing spot was. They kept it a secret. Um, and clearly uh, the Native American populations were clearly also engaged in, in fishing because these uh, cod populations were quite abundant. Um, that said, uh, that cod population has has uh, now been one that's become very contentious and is uh, at, at this point in time, actually one of the examples I would give of one of the, the most uh, acrimonious management stories out there in terms of, of how uh, how contentious uh, the management of the cod populations have been, and and how uh, there's been a number of uh, I would say mistakes made in terms of uh, communications in both directions between uh, the local population, uh, the fishermen in particular, and and the management agencies that set uh, this, and that it's it's not a not a good example of, of uh, a good relationship between the managed uh, industry and the, uh, indus and the regulatory body doing the, the management. Not that they're doing, not that the numbers are being set wrong, but just the way that the history there has been a contentious one. So let's look back at that history. This figure comes from the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and these numbers uh, go back, you know, arguably hundreds of years prior to that. And what we saw for a period of hundreds of years was a sustainable fishery uh, that 
you know, there's stories of just, you know, enormous amounts of, of cod in this New England fishery, um, and not just in Gloucester, but across up the whole coast, um, up into Canada as well. This has been a major fishery uh, for the Northeast. Uh, what changed in this fishery was that after the war, um, there was a, a dramatic change in the technology that was being used for fishing. Uh, and we had larger boats, we had more trawling, and basically the efficiency at which the population was being harvested uh, went up. And initially that looked like a boon uh, until it wasn't, until you know that, that fishery uh, collapsed, um, slight hint of recovery, and then you know collapsed again, and basically was shut down in the 90s as a as a commercial fishery, uh, and then is now back open at very very limited catch levels. And so you know you had a, a fishing industry in the area based bought gear and and built an economy based on these numbers in the 50s through the 90s and now is being told that they can harvest a fraction of a percent of what they used to harvest. Um, but at the same time, population has collapsed. There's really no opportunity to harvest at the rates that there were uh, previously. So it's been a challenging issue because the populations are not rebounding quickly. Um, and at the same time, additional things are changing in addition to the harvest rates that are making this more difficult, such as climate change and, and pollution and things like that. Um, and as well as damage to the underlying habitat that affect the recovery rate. Um, so in, in many ways, a classic story of, of how not to manage a population sustainably. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the only example of how not to manage a fishery sustainably. Uh, if we look at global fisheries, uh, there's basically no fisheries left uh, that are underdeveloped, where catches are below sustainable levels. Uh, there's a number that are growing or fully developed, but the problem that is that the number of, of overfished uh, fisheries has been growing uh, and the demands on that or uh, protein for many parts of the world is it's just growing as human populations are growing. And, and while uh, those of us here in Boston can e easily uh, shift our protein consumption to other sources, not all the world is quite as lucky. And, and there's a lot of populations uh, around the world where uh, that are very dependent upon local fisheries for, for food and for their economies still. So given that, that populations are important to many natural resource industries, uh, and we want to manage them in ways where such they don't collapse, because clearly that's not to the benefit of the species or to the industry. Uh, so we want to figure out how do we actually manage these sustainably. So can we use models to help us understand uh, how large the population is, how long, how large it would be if there weren't any human intervention, uh, how much can be harvested without causing the population to collapse, uh, and how do we achieve that? How do we adjust our population models to account for harvesting? So that's what I'm going to pick up in the next series of videos.